So, questions from the homework from last day? So, number one and number two went okay? Okay. Uh, anyways, if you want me to, you can ask. Now, number four. A parachute, a parachutist free falls for a while. Have I mentioned lately I jumped out of an airplane? A parachutist free falls for a while, and they open up their parachute. If the force of air resistance from the parachute is equal to the weight of the person, there's the parachutist. There's the weight of the person. And apparently air resistance is exactly equal. Pardon me? Yeah, and you'll notice part C is actually on the next page, and maybe that's why you couldn't. The answer C is. Is that what you didn't notice? Okay. Yeah, it got chopped off. I'll, you know what? It didn't used to do that. I'm guessing, I, I think I've told you, these were typed up by a friend of mine. They're very good notes. I bought them off a friend of mine. He typed them in Word 95 for Mac. So what are we, 2011? This is Office 2010. Anyway, some of the diagrams and some of the formatting changes periodically, even when I open it. Suddenly I go, hey, there didn't used to be a line break there. That used to be all on one page. Number five. Number five. A cyclist is moving to the right steadily. I would probably, Brett, in my mind, underline the word steadily. It tells you constant speed. At 8.2 meters per second, if the force of air drag is 130 newtons, then what's the force of propulsion from the road? Free body diagram. There's the biker. What are the forces acting on him? Get the obvious ones. The really obvious ones. Definitely gravity pulling him down. Is the cyclist sinking into the earth? No. Is he taking off into the air? Then there must be a vertical force exactly balancing out gravity, same length approximately that I tried to draw it. What did we call the force of a surface pushing back up, counteracting gravity? Because it's normally there. It's not what we call it, the normal force. Normal actually means 90 degrees in math as well, so it's 90 degrees to the surface. Now, what are the other forces acting on this biker? Tell me, Brett. More, sorry? Okay, air drag. And it says it's 130 newtons. Okay. And then I guess propulsion from the road, which is actually the force of friction from the tires, but they called it propulsion. I'll just call it F. What word did I underline? What does that mean my overall net acceleration is? Zero. What does that mean my overall net force is? Meant to be real obvious, you're overcomplicating it. Force equals what times what, kiddo? So if my acceleration is zero, what's my overall net force? Zero. So that means everything has to be in balance. My vertical forces are in balance. Yes? What does propulsion have to be to be in balance here? I heard it. It's got to be 130. By the way, that's what. By, when you're biking at a steady speed, what you're really doing is you're exactly matching the force of friction between your tires, which ends up being the force of propulsion. You're exactly matching that to the air resistance hitting your body. That's how you travel at a steady speed. But, and that's also why you have to give some effort. You can't just coast because there is a force slowing you down. You have to continually overcome that air resistance. If you were in a vacuum, you'd be able to pedal just fine without air resistance slowing you down, but you'd be dead. But for a split second there, the biking would be really easy. Is that okay? You see what I meant by so easy that it's tough? You know what? 130, if you're steady speed, it's got to be 130 forwards. You can't slow 130 backwards. Is that okay? Any others? Hearing nothing, seeing nothing. Okay. Well then, make sure your name is on it. Hand it inwards. And let's move on to lesson two. Lesson two. One-dimensional force problems says this, important one-dimensional force problems include, whoops, a little too far, important one-dimensional force problems include the elevator or apparent weight problem, 
the air resistance problem, friction problems, and the many body problems. First of all, let's reiterate from last year. The normal force. This is the contact force between the floor or a surface and the object. That means if you're hanging from a rope, not touching the ground, is there ever a normal force? No, because you're not touching a surface. It's the force with which the floor pushes on you. And interestingly enough, the normal force is also the value that a scale would read if you were standing on it. I did a big speech in lesson one. We, I had somebody stand on a scale and do deep knee bends. We said, what does a scale measure? It doesn't measure mass. It measures your normal force. In fact, sometimes normal force is called the apparent weight of an object. Any good amusement park ride, Mitchell, worth its salt, any good amusement park ride messes with the normal force. That's where we get our rush. You want to get your heart rate rising? If I change the normal force, your body's not used to that, you'll get your adrenaline rush. That's what the elevator does. On the way up, you feel an increase in normal force. You feel like you're being pressed down into your seat when really the seat's pushing up against you harder than you're used to. On the way down with the elevator, you feel a decrease in normal force. You feel like you're flying out of your seat. Actually, no. Instead of the normal force pushing up you with one, against you with 1G, which it does all the time, they drop it to maybe 0.6 Gs. So you're still accelerating down, but not as much, and that's where your body goes, ah, something feels wrong, cool. Okay. Any good amusement park ride messes with the normal force. So... If a person with mass M, if a person with mass M and weight W is in an elevator standing on a bathroom scale, and just to make it easy, let's pretend that instead of the scale weighing in kilograms, let's pretend that it reads in newtons so we don't always have to convert to kilograms. If the elevator starts at rest and accelerates up, what will the scale read? W? More than W? or less than W. So you ready? Once again, we're going to vote. Once again, how high you hold your hand is how certain you are of the answer. So you're standing on a scale in an elevator, and the elevator is accelerating up. Who says that the scale will remain unchanged? It will read W, your weight. Who says that it will read B, more than W? Most of you, almost all of you. Who says that it will read C less than W? Joel. <laughs> that alone should give you pause. The fact that Joel picked it might cause you to choose a different answer. Convince me. How would I answer it? First of all, I agree. The answer is B. Okay. In this unit, I'll be talking a little bit more about those using principles of physics, right, to explain questions. By the way, we'll go over the test on a day once everyone's written and I have a short lesson. I've still got a couple of kids that haven't written the kinematics test. Once everyone's written, we will go through the tests in detail. Just got to wait till everyone writes. How would I answer this? I would say 90% of the time, Zay, if they give me a forces question, I answer it using a free body diagram. Here's the person. What are the forces acting on this person? Get the obvious ones. Absolutely, I have mg down. Is this person in free fall? No, then there has to be another force pointing upwards. What force? Since we he's standing on a surface, we're going to call it the normal force. Now, is the normal force bigger or smaller? Which way is the elevator accelerating? The elevator is accelerating up, so now I usually use Fn for normal force, but it looks like this time they want me to use the letter W, weight, for normal force. Fine, I'll use their letters. Connor, who's winning? In fact, we would say this. The weight minus gravity equals your net force Ma. And since this question, Mitchell, is about weight, let's get the weight by itself. Mitchell, how would I get the W by itself in this equation? The weight is going to be MA 
plus mg. Now, if A is zero, if you're not accelerating, what's MA, Brett? Zero, your weight would just be mg. That's what it is when you're on the ground. Or when you're traveling at a constant speed because you can't feel the acceleration. If this was accelerating downwards, like negative, what would the weight be? Well, you'd have a negative plus a positive. Weight would be smaller. You feel lighter if you're accelerating downwards. But in this case, we're accelerating upwards, positive. There's a number here. I would say weight equals ma plus mg. Therefore, w must be greater because it's your original weight plus something, a positive number. It's got to be bigger. There's how I'd answer that, Matt, with very little English, mostly equations, and just thinking about a good free body diagram. Example 2 says write a net force equation. There. We did. Example three, a 35 kilogram stands on a kilogram scale. So this scale is in kilograms. If I know the normal force, how do I go from normal force to kilograms? How do I go from normal force to kilograms, Brianne? Take the normal force and divide by 9.8. Okay, okay. so this time they want us to go to kilos. I'll just divide by 9.8 at the very, very end. The accelerate the the accelerate, the elevator accelerates which way? It says find the normal force, find the scale reading. You know what the first thing I'm gonna do here is? Yes, you do. What's the first thing I'm gonna do here? Free body diagram. There's the person. What are the forces acting on this person? Get the obvious one. Is this person in free fall? No? then there must be a force pushing in the opposite direction. What? The normal force. Now I'll call it Fn. I prefer that notation. Um, oh, is the normal force bigger or smaller than gravity? Who's winning? How do you know, Kara? Uh, Got to be fussy. Because they're accelerating down. If they were going down at a constant speed, it could be a tie. So I'm going to draw my normal force deliberately shorter. And what I told you that we're going to do all through this unit, our vendor, is we're going to go winner minus loser equals my net force MA. So my equation, Jacob, is going to be this. MG minus normal force equals MA. Now, Brett, by doing this, I'm deciding to let down be positive in this unit, if I go winner minus loser, I'll never put a negative 9.8 in for G. I'll take care of the signs ahead of time myself. What's this question asking us to find, by the way? What does A want us to find? Get, Brett, get the normal force by itself. How? Can I do that one step? That's okay. A, normal force equals MG minus MA. Plus that to that side. Minus that to that side. Is that okay, Trevor? Okay. Do I know M? Do I know G? Do I know M? Yeah. Do I know A? Oh, now it's plug and chug. 35 times 9.8 minus 35 times 2.25. What's the normal force that this student is feeling? Uh, 200 and... I don't know. What do you got? 200, Mr. Dewey? Yeah, I think... Is it, is it in the 200s? No? What do you get? That's my way of saying get your calculator out and try these. Longer it takes, the more homework you have. Because the lesson takes longer. What'd you get? 
264. So we'll go to three sig figs for our final answer. Units. Newtons. Is it 264 or 265 rounded off properly? 264? Okay. We still have that number on our calculator. B, how can I find what the scale will read in kilograms? If I know the normal force, how do I change that to kilograms? Divide by? So since you have that number on your calculator, divide by 9.8. What's this person's scale reading right now? 27? Even? 26 point? Oh, so it is 27. Okay. 27.0 kilograms. Kara, is that okay? Kara, is that okay? Yes. Kayla, sorry. My bad. Kara's over there. Kayla, is that okay? Yes. Good. Then shush. Thank you. Are you talking physics? Yes? Okay. But still shush. So there's the famous elevator question. I like that question. I like that question. Um, air resistance. Air resistance is the force of air molecules bumping into an object that's moving through the air. The force of air resistance has as its direction opposite to the direction of motion. Example 4 says, draw force diagrams for each of the following, a ball being thrown, and then once it leaves your hand, a ball going up and a ball going down. We're talking about this. Three sections. While I'm throwing it, when it leaves my hand on the way up, and then on the way down is part C. So while it's in my hand, while I'm throwing it, part A, what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious ones. Absolutely. What else? You know what? We can call it normal force. I'm actually, because it's an outside person applying a force, I'm going to call it F applied, the applied force. And if you said normal force, I'd take that. But I don't consider myself a surface. I consider myself an outside being. By the way, why did I draw the arrow so much longer? Well, you got to be winning, right? Now, you could argue when it's in my hand as I'm throwing it, there is probably a small amount of air resistance as well, and it would be in the opposite direction of motion. If I'm throwing it up while it's in my hand, the air is pressing against it. Now, on the way up, what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious ones. Gravity. What else? Air resistance, which way, up or down? Which way is the ball moving? Up, air resistance acts in the direction opposite to motion. There would be also a small F air, air resistance. Why small? This is pretty aerodynamic. How can I make air resistance larger? Yeah, increase the surface area. It's a parachute does, right? Piece of paper. That's why a piece of paper doesn't drop very well. It tends to float. Big surface area, small mass. On the way down, what are the forces acting on this ball? Get the obvious one. Gravity. What else? Air resistance. Which way this time? Yeah. Yeah. Having said that, most of the time we're going to choose to ignore air resistance because we're going to assume that our projectiles are pretty aerodynamic, just like we did last unit. Example 4b, it says this. In example 4b, and I'll turn back to it in one second while you guys stay on this page, how can the ball be rising? Okay, you all found the page? There we go. Now you're going to yawn. It was that much work to turn the page? Really? In example 4B, how can the ball be rising 
if all of the forces acting on it are downwards. Explain. So you guys stay there. 4B, both forces are downwards. How the heck can it be going up? Because it is. How the heck can it be going up? Or maybe it's not going up. Maybe we're just, maybe our free body diagram is wrong. Is that a hand up, Nicole? It looked like a hand up to me. I don't know. I saw this out of the corner of my eye. I'm pretty sure. It's my way of saying, can that maybe be put away quite later or something? Thank you, Kayla. Got your name right now. Matt. Okay, force tells us, uh, well, force equals what times what? What does the A stand for? Yeah, force involves acceleration, not velocity. And velocity and acceleration are direction are independent of each other. Now, eventually, if you accelerate for a long time, your velocity will be in the same direction of your, as your acceleration, eventually. But, here's all I would write. V and A are independent of each other. You can accelerate backwards and be moving forwards. No problem. In fact, you do that every time when you come to a stop at a red light. You're traveling forwards, but you're decelerating. You're accelerating backwards. So we call it slowing down. Same thing is happening, but vertically. It's slowing down. Example 6 says, if the falling ball in example 4C is speeding up, if the falling ball in example 4C is speeding up, write a net force equation. You guys stay here. Here was our diagram. All right. We want to write a net force equation for this. Who's winning? Who's winning? Gravity. Who's losing? Air. By the way, in this equation, if I ask you to do this equation, who's winning? Who's winning? Gravity and air. You'd have winner plus winner, no loser, because they're both in the same direction. Clearly, gravity is bigger, Joel, but it's winner plus winner. Anyways, our equation would be this. Winner minus loser equals MA, my net force. Did they say in example six that they wanted me to solve this? No, they just asked for the equation. Good. Example seven. A 90 kilogram parachutist, I mentioned that I jumped out of an airplane. A 90 kilogram parachutist free falls for a time and then opens a parachute. If the parachutist slows down at a rate of 1.5 meters per second squared, A, compare the forces, B, write a force equation, and C, find the force of air resistance on the parachute system. Okay. You know what the first thing I'm going to do here is? What do you think, Zay? I think I'm going to do a free body diagram. There's me. Did I mention that I jumped out of an airplane? Okay. What are the forces on me? Get the obvious ones. And by the way, those of you who didn't have me last year, the reason I always say what are the forces, get the obvious ones. That way you've got something on your diagram. You don't feel so stressed. You're more relaxed. So I always, when, when Brett earlier started giving me the tougher ones, I'll never do it though. I'll always get the obvious ones done and out of the way. Also, that way I don't forget the obvious ones. So... What are the forces acting on this parachute? Get the obvious ones. Absolutely, gravity. What else? I heard it. Kara, I think you said air resistance, but it's hard for me to say because you said it the same volume twice in a row. Yes? Did you say air resistance? Now, here's the real question. Bigger or smaller? Well, first of all, can they be... Mitchell? 
Thank you. Can they be the same size? Why do I know they can't be the same size? I have an unbalanced acceleration, just like your biker question earlier, but here I know it's not balanced. Okay. Right when I pulled my parachute, I mentioned I jumped out of an airplane. Right when I pulled my parachute, did I slow down or speed up? Slow down. Are you saying I was decelerating? Uh, that must have meant that for a split second, the force in that direction must have been bigger when I pulled my chute. Now, a parachute is actually a very, very complicated... Uh, do I talk about it later? Oh, I do. Okay. Air resistance is really complicated because it's not constant. Air resistance changes depending on how fast you're moving. What's the air resistance of this piece of paper right now? Zero. You know why? Not moving. If I went really fast, that's a fairly big air resistance. In fact, it bent the paper. I could feel it in my hand. If I move the paper fairly slowly, I can't even feel that there's an air resistance, although I'm sure there is. So air resistance builds a very, very complicated force. You really need calculus to analyze it properly. Do we have calculus at our fingertips here? No. So that's why we're looking at this very specific situation. That's why I had to tell you, hey, uh, there is a net acceleration, and it's upwards. You know how I know it's upwards? Slowing down. So A said compare the forces. Really, that's the physics speak for do a free body diagram. B, they want the equation. Andrew, who's winning? So the equation is going to be winner. Minus, who's losing? Loser, the force, not you, equals MA. B said, write a force equation. Have I written a force equation? Good. What does C want me to do? Okay. Get the air resistance by itself. How? I think air resistance is going to be MA plus... Mg. Let's double check. Connor, did they give me the mass? Check. Do I know A? Check. Do I know M? Oh, yeah, you already said that. Do I know G? Oh, now it's plug and chug. 90 times 1.5 plus 90 times 9.8. Mitch, what do you get for the air resistance? It's my way of saying pick up your calculator and start doing some typing. What did you get? 1,017. Anybody else? So I'm going to write 1,017, except Mitch, how many sig figs is that? Don't like that. Uh, 1.02, 1,020 is what we'll round. 1.02 times 10 to the what, Mitchell? Units? Units? Don't even have to think about it. Newtons, it's force. Okay? Now, as soon as I... Look up. As soon as I slow down, this number will get smaller because air resistance will get smaller. In fact, as I slow down more and more and more, I'll reach the magic number where my acceleration is zero, where air resistance exactly balances out gravity, and that's how hard, how fast I'm going to hit the ground at. But with a parachute, it's a survivable velocity. And in fact, in a parachute, I've mentioned what I jumped out of an airplane. In a parachute, what they do at the very, very end is they change your angle of descent. They fill the chute at the last split second and increase the air resistance for a split second. And if they time it just right, you'll be almost at a stop and then just drop to the ground barely. So on the next page, it says the force of air resistance, actually not a constant value. The force gets larger as speed increases. And in fact, a falling object will eventually reach the point where the force of, it says force if, this should be the force of, right here, this should be the force 
of air resistance equals the weight of the object. And the fancy word for that, you may have heard this term before, we call that terminal velocity. You're not going to speed up any faster. So when I jumped out of my airplane and I was in free fall, I, I, uh, I would hit terminal velocity. Terminal velocity, I think, is around 230 meters per second. Example eight. A parachutist jumps out of an airplane and free falls. They reach terminal speed and they maintain that speed for a while. Then they open their parachute. They quickly reach a different terminal speed and descend to the ground. Sketch a velocity time graph. Okay. Mr. Duick. Yes. Shouldn't this technically all be negative because you're going down? It should. You know what? I'm going to graph a speed versus time graph, or I'm just going to let down be positive. Okay? And we're only talking about vertical speed, not horizontal speed, because when you're in the airplane before you jump, you are traveling horizontally. But here's what I'm going to say. At the beginning, you're in the airplane. What's your vertical speed? So for a while, you're traveling at zero. And then you jump. What happens to your speed? Hmm? When you jump, what happens to your speed? It would increase. And in fact, it's going to do this. It's going to increase, but it's slowly going to level off as you fall faster and faster. You hit terminal velocity. There's terminal velocity for a little bit. Then you pull your chute. What happens to your speed? And you hit a new terminal velocity. Lower. Survivable, hopefully. You keep this up, and then you hit the ground. And when you hit the ground, you come to a stop. I think it would look something like that. Jump, free fall. While you're in free fall, you hit terminal velocity for a few seconds. Pull your parachute, slow down, slow down. Hit a new terminal velocity, level off for a while. The times are all skewed because you're only in free fall for about 30 seconds when it takes you about four minutes to actually get down once the parachute is open. Whatever. I'm not that interested in the scale. I'm more interested in the height. Speaking of free fall, Mr. Duick has a video. Normally here I show my jumping out of an airplane video. Have I mentioned lately I jumped out of an airplane? I haven't? Well, I did. Have I showed you the video already? I got a couple of more to show you. But first of all, homework number one. Number two. Number three. Number four, number five, six is good. Seven is good. So, so far I've assigned everything. Nine is good. Oh, heck. Eight, you say? Sure, why not? And ten. Skip eleven. Twelve. They go pretty quick. Thirteen is a review of projectiles. I'm going to pass on that. 14 is, uh, I'm going to pass on that. 